Hey everybody, I'm Kirby. This is Kirby Meets Audio, and today is step three on our six step process of how to design a speaker. Um, we're designing an enclosure today. Yeah. That was silly, that was silly. Enclosure design is one of my favorite steps um, because it's one of the steps where you can really let your creativity out. Um, within the guidelines we're gonna be going over today, uh, there's a million ways you can make your enclosure unique. I made a worksheet to go along with this video. You can find it over at kmakits.com. Click right up there to check it out. Um, it goes over everything in the process of designing a speaker. You can also get uh, step one and step two over on the blog too. Check it out. In step one, we got down all of our goals and constraints on paper, and we answered two pretty main questions, big questions. Uh, one of them being that this is going to be a two-way speaker design, so it's gonna have, utilize a crossover with a tweeter and a woofer. Uh, the second thing being it's going to be either a passive radiator enclosure or a ported enclosure. In step two and step 2.5, we went over our process for selecting drivers for this project, uh, and we came down to either the TCP-115 or the DS-90. So the step of designing an enclosure isn't a super tough step, so don't be too intimidated. Uh, we're gonna be using free software called WinISD to help us along the process. Um, it's really intuitive, pretty easy software uh, for designing basic enclosures. All right, so before we dive in, I get this question all the time and it's super basic, um, but let's just get it out of the way before we start. Um, I get the question of how do I design a speaker enclosure with a tweeter? Like wh where do I put the tweeter parameters in the software? Y y y the simple answer is you just don't don't worry about the tweeter. Um, the, the size of the enclosure, other than the size of the front baffle, and the location of the tweeter, the size of the, the internals of the enclosure doesn't matter for the tweeter. Uh, the tweeter is kind of a standalone little driver. Um, basically, the only uh, thing the enclosure volume, the enclosure size, the internal volume has uh, an effect on are the woofers or a subwoofer if you're using like a three-way or, or anything like that. So you're basically just building the enclosure for the woofers. Just think of it that way, like a sub. All right, let's jump in. Okay, so WinISD. WinISD looks like this. Um, let's go over lay the land a little bit. We got projects over on this side. You can see I got some projects loaded up. Uh, this is your graph. This is going to show you uh, what your speaker hopefully will sound like. Um, down here we've got a few other things to mess with that we're going to mess with a little later. Um, yeah, let's get started. This is actually my third time starting this. <laughs> Uh, first time my computer malfunctioned. It's a piece of, uh, it's a not a great computer. Um, second time my camera stopped recording randomly for some reason. Hopefully we're recording audio. Yes, we're recording audio. Uh, so this is the third start. We're, it's gonna it's gonna happen this time. No no worries. Okay, so first time in here, you're gonna come up here to the load or new project whatever uh, tab. Uh, the software comes preloaded with a bunch of drivers um, and their parameters, uh, but they, it doesn't come with Dayton Audio. And we uh, decided we wanted to use either the Dayton Audio TCP-115 or the DS-90. So we had to import our own uh, parameters. I'm not gonna show you how to do that right now. Um, because that's beyond the scope of this video, but uh, 123 toyed or 123 toyed, I don't know what it is. Uh, if you're watching this, wh which, which one is it? Um, but you should go check out his channel. He has awesome content on speaker building, um, uh, using software, stuff like WinISD. He has a great tutorial on how to import um, parameters into WinISD. And it's important to watch this video because if you, you have to do it in a certain order. If you don't do it in the right order, the program doesn't like it. I, I don't really know why. I'm sure there's reason, but do that. He also has some other great tutorials on just how to use WinISD. Um, uh, yeah, it's good. Check it out. Link down in the description. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, the TCP-115. So we're going to select that. Data's in there. We're going to go next. Uh, we're going to use two drivers. Uh, that was also in step one, right? when we decided what we wanted. Uh, it's gonna be a normal placement. We're not doing ISO. And we're gonna do a vented enclosure. So you have a, a few options here. You got closed, some bandpass stuff, passive radiator, um, but we're gonna do vented. 
because that's what we're testing. Uh, so alignment, uh, Chebyshev is is what you kind of want to stick with, especially if you're starting out. Um, another one you might want to dabble with next is uh, extended base shelf uh, down to negative 3 dB. That's just going to give you a little more base. It is going to mess up your mids a little bit, um, so be aware. Start with Chevy, Ch Chevy Chase. <laughs> Chevy Chev. All right, so we're going to call this PE. I still don't have a name for this project, um, but this is the, what is that, TC, TCP115. Vented. All right. And boom, right off the bat, it gives you, well, it gives you the Chevy Chev parameters. So now you can see the spectrum graph. So this is your zero dB line. Uh, this is your negative three dB line. Negative three dB is kind of the standard for how low, um, how low in dB or amplitude volume, basically, uh, y how low you want your speaker frequency to go. So like anything below three dB, you're not going to really count. So like this, this does play some amplitude down to 30 dB. I mean, 30 Hertz, um, but it's at, what is that? Like negative 21 dB. You're not going to hear that. So anything below negative three dB, that's the standard. You're going to, you, you can hear a little bit below that, but it's standard. Okay. So you can see at negative three dB on our graph, our line cuts right through 50 hertz. And back in our step one, we decided that a few things with the enclosure. One, we wanted at least, or not at least, but a five inch front baffle. Uh, the other thing we wanted was for our speakers to get down around 50 hertz. So this actually works out perfect. But we have to go into this section down here and see if what this spit out is actually possible. So driver, this section talks about uh, all the details of our driver. Box is the details of our box. So you can see here, uh, it wants the box volume to be 0.23 cubic feet, 238 cubic feet. Um, and the tuning frequency of the box is uh, 54 hertz. And then in vent, uh, it wants us to have one vent at four inches in diameter. But it wants us to have a, four, a 45 inch long vent. Um, our speakers aren't going to be, our enclosure is not going to be 45 inches. Um, so, unless we want to put a bunch of bends, it, it's not going to work. 45 inches is not going to work. Um, so, what we can do is we can change a few things. We could change our tuning frequency, but we don't really want to do that. So the other thing we can change is uh, our vent diameter. So the smaller your vent diameter, the uh, shorter your vent uh, length needs to be to hit a desired hertz range. Um, so uh, let's do, actually let's do one inch. So at one inch, so you can see our box stay the same tuning frequency and size at one inch. Uh, our port length only needs to be two and a quarter inches and we're still staying at 50 hertz at negative three db but something you need to be aware of up here when we change our graph is uh and we change it to rear port air velocity oh okay <laughs> that just threw me um this graph measures uh how much basically uh, basics is uh, how much sound we're going to hear in the port. So air is being moved within the enclosure by the driver, which is moving air through the port. So the smaller the port, the more air, the more air sound is going to come from the port. The more sound from the air is going to come, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, and that's called chuffing. I'm sure you've heard chuffing before. Uh, what reason why this threw me is basically what we want is to keep this under 20. We want to keep the, the top of this peak in this graph. Um, but we shouldn't, <laughs> that shouldn't happen with a one inch uh, diameter vent. But we need to go to signal. This is at one watt. So if we were going to play our system at only one watt, it'd be fine, right? Um, but our drivers can, can take more wattage, more power, 
the volume could be higher uh, than one watt. So I, I, I think, so we can go over to Daynari's website. We got the thing here. Power handling is 40 watts RMS. So we wanna come in here and put in 40 watts RMS. So that's full power. That's, you know, our speakers to the max. That, that's as much as they as we want to put through them. They can go higher, as you can see here. It says you can put 80, 80 watts through, but we don't really wanna do that because we're gonna get distortion and all this other stuff. They're really meant for 40 watts. And now we can see our graph is way, way above 20. So one inch vent is not gonna work. So we need to change that. So let's try two inch. Now at two inches, we can see we're just out. We're just above. We're gonna go back into a watts. If we say we'll play at 30 watts, 30 watts we're in, we're in the safe zone, right? Most likely you're not gonna go above 20 watts per speaker uh, with these drivers, um, but you wanna be safe. You wanna go up to the, the total. You, you definitely wanna look at that at air velocity, in your port and make sure you're, you're putting in the wattage that you want your speakers to be rated at. So the next thing we're gonna look at, we're gonna go back to transfer. So this is our graph. Um, so this is what the TCP 115 looks like. Um, I already put in the DS90 and this is what our DS90 looks like. Let me just make sure, tune for vents. So this is even at a two inch, at a two inch diameter vent, it's at 16, almost 17 inches. That's, that's still not. So we're gonna, let's put in 1.5. So that's about nine inches. That's better. We could probably do three quarters, 12 inches. That's still probably too much. I don't even know if they make a vent like that. So that's probably the best we can do. So we want one port at, uh, one and a half inch diameter at um, just under nine and a half inches. Um, yeah, 60. All right, so let's do our signal. Yeah, so at 20, I'm gonna get rid of this. Go into air velocity. And you can see this is still, this is a little, oh, uh, no, here we go, there. So this is also a little, little over with a 20 actually with 20 watts, yeah, still a little over, but that's okay. Um, the main point I that we're looking at is, you can see where our negative three, and in this one, this is the even more drastic uh, difference between uh, our zero dB amplitude and the negative three. So our zero is, is technically up here around 300, 400. Um, but uh, the negative three is down by 80. So we got 80 Hertz, just under 80 Hertz at negative three dB, um, which is not what we're looking for, right? <laughs> we, one of our goals uh, back in step one was that we wanted our uh, enclosures to be tuned to around um, 50 Hertz. So 80 Hertz, it's still pretty low. Like that's, it's not a bad speaker, but it's just not really what we're looking for. The, the DS90 drivers don't really work in this situation. So we're gonna cut those out. Um, the other thing that we looked at was passive radiators. So we can see here, this is, we can use, you know, using the same steps that we did at the beginning, instead of choosing vented, you'd choose passive radiator and it would um, spit out these numbers. So we got two passive radiators that basically come out to be the same thing. Uh, the ND140 is a five and a quarter inch driver, and then uh, another one that's six and a half inches. This is our vented with the two inch, I think it was like 11 inch, two inch diameter, 11 inch port. Our 3 dB is much lower than um, the passive radiator. So the passive radiator's 3 dB is way back here, around 100 hertz. It's actually worse than the, the DS90. I, and, so uh, I'm gonna go with the vented. I know, so there's a few reasons why I'm picking vented for this project. One is simplicity. Two is according to this software, vented hits our goals better than uh, passive radiator does. And you can see 
here if I this is the second passive radiator I, tr I tried and it's they're both basically the same um, and the third reason is I don't have a lot of experience with passive radiators um, I, I've done I, I'm trying to think I think a long time ago I've done a few projects with passive radiators but it's not something I'm super uh, aware of um, so I want to do more especially for this kit I, I, I just I feel more comfortable going with something that I, I understand a little better. I'm sure there's a way to make a passive radiator work with this kit even better than the vented. Uh, I just don't know what that is. And <laughs> if you've been following my channel long enough, me doing experiments on here and broadcasting it to all you hasn't worked out very well in the past. <laughs> um, go back and check out my uh, open baffle speaker design. That was, that was fun. Um, Anyways, okay, so now that we've narrowed it down, I kind of did this work before, um, but we narrowed it down to our vented with the TCP 115s, two of them. Now we can go into the actual design of the enclosures. <laughs> okay, so WinISP tells us that we want our, uh, the internal volume of our enclosures to be 0.238 cubic feet. Um, now I use a website right here. I think this is for the 12 volt. I think this is, this is yeah, this is for subwoofers, but it works. I mean, basically we're making a subwoofer just for, we're just adding a tweeter to our subwoofer. So it's kind of the same thing, but it's a really great site. I'll put a link down in the description, by the way. It's a really great site. Uh, it has a bunch of calculators on it. They're not the most accurate and I wouldn't, I mean, it's fine to get started with this kind of stuff, um, but uh, like uh, like the port um, calculator and stuff like that, uh, there's better ways to do it, such as an ISP, what we're doing right now. But what's really, what I like a lot, let's get rid of that, is the um, volume calculator. So they have calculators for different enclosure shapes, which is nice. So if you, you know, are building a, a different shape, let me get that out of there, different shape uh, enclosure, uh, you, can, you can find the internal volume really easy using the software. Um, but we're gonna be using the rectangular, rectangle and square. So we just come in here, we know we want the front uh, baffle diameter to be five inches. We want the height to be somewhere around 17 inches and the depth, let's put in five inches. And the thickness is gonna be 0.5 inches, which comes out to uh, 0.148 cubic feet uh, volume. That's under what we need. So we need 0.238. So we go in and adjust. Uh, these two are usually what I know. The one that I, uh, that I mess around with is usually depth. Um, so let's go and let's do 10. We'll do 10 inches. That gives us 0.33. What was it again? Yeah, 0.23. So that's over. So let's do eight. So 0.259, that's pretty much perfect. Um, so we're not gonna get too detailed right now, but some things to consider are this, the, the internal volume that WinISD gives us, the 0.238 cubic feet, that should be all free space within the enclosure. So the back of our driver, like the magnet of our driver, takes up space within the enclosure. Also, our port tube, which is two inches in diameter and 11, uh, well, 10 and a half inches long, also takes up room. Um, so you can actually go in and calculate how much volume those two things take up within the box and subtract that or add that to the amount of volume that you're gonna need uh, for the enclosure. Um, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna get too deep into that right now um, because I don't even know if this is gonna be the actual final size of the enclosure, but we're just, messing around we're just having fun with this um but so sh overshooting just by a little bit um is is probably what you want to do some give or take within the enclosure size the volume is okay 
Uh, you can be as, like with everything on speaker building, you can be as detailed and specific as you want to be, or you can be as loose and as, you know, fun as you want to be. Whatever floats your boat, whatever your goals are. <laughs> My light just went out. Um, let me get a battery, just a second. Ooh, I just looked into the light. Pretty bright. All right, we're back. All good. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. You can be as strict or as loose as you want to be. Um, we're gonna be a little looser today in this video. Uh, so yeah, I hope that um, I hope that helps. <laughs> I know that was a little uh, maybe a little sporadic, a little spastic, but um, that's kind of my process. That's how I go through it. And like I've said in all the other steps, this is an iterative process. This doesn't just happen, uh, you know, in a one flowing, you do this step and then you move on to the next step and the next step and you never go back. You all, you're always, at least I am, I don't know how anyone else does it, but I'm always going back and forth and, and figuring out what works, what doesn't. So the next thing I would do would be to write down all that information, the internal volume of what my closure needs to be, my uh, estimate on the outside or size of what the enclosure is going to be, the five inches, 17 inches, I think it was eight inches, something like that. Um, and then I'd start sketching out what I want the enclosure to look like, uh, where I want the drivers to be, all that stuff. Um, I'm gonna do that in my Instagram and on the stories. So if you haven't followed me on Instagram, go do that, link down in the bio. Not the bio, the description. So the next video is gonna be step four. That's gonna be using more free software to design our crossover for our two-way system. If you enjoyed this video or any of my videos, please hit that like button. Um, if you're new here, subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, the bell, you know what the bell does. If you wanna build your own speakers, head over to kmakits.com. Uh, I have build plans and build kits, including free build plans um, that it's your fancy. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. It's definitely my most popular build plans. I have a Patreon where awesome fans like you help me do more videos like this one. Um, and if you wanna see the behind the scenes of my speaker building, making these videos, doing other stuff, jujitsu. Who's into jujitsu, by the way? Comments. Um, hit me up on Instagram, uh, Kirby Meets Audio. Just search it, it's there. All right, appreciate you guys. Sorry this video was a week late. Uh, hopefully I'll be back next week. See you guys.